Hello everyone, it's me, Billy Younger, again. This time we're talking about special relativity 005. Uh, 004 we just finished doing, uh, and that was a problem in which we used length contraction and time dilation uh, to make sense of a muon created in the upper atmosphere, making it to the surface of the Earth despite having only a 2.2 microsecond lifetime. Uh, in this one, we're going to examine some terms that are often used uh, in relativistic physics as, as well as quantum mechanics and stuff of that sort uh, by solving some very straightforward, simple problems. We're going to make use of the uh, definition of relativistic momentum and relativistic uh, kinetic energy as well as the rest energy. So let me start by sharing my screen so you can see the actual problem we're planning on working. Here's the problem. This is what is the speed of a 4.00 GeV, that's a giga electron volt proton. So what is the speed of a 4.00 giga electron volt proton? B, what is the gamma factor of this 4.00 GeV proton? C, what is the momentum of this proton? And D, what is the rest energy of a proton? If we use classical physics, how much percent error would we have in our kinetic energy? That's part E. And then finally, part F, if we use classical physics, how much percent error would we have in our momentum? Uh, I'll also give you the mass of the proton being 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So I think we can get started with that. The first question is, of course, what is the speed of the proton? And the second question is, what is the gamma factor? You'll see that actually it's easier to solve for the gamma factor first and then to solve for uh, the speed. And then finally, we can use the gamma factor to compute the momentum. So let's get started. And we might have to come back to this to look at it in a second. So let's stop sharing and let's turn on the document cam. So first off, we need to make some sense of what this GeV, EV, all this stuff is. We're talking about electron volts here, OK? So in order to do that, I need to introduce you to some uh, findings in electricity and magnetism. In electricity and magnetism, we found that the potential energy U is equal to the charge times the difference in voltage. OK, so this is potential energy which would have units of joules normally. This would be the charge of, say, an electron or proton or whatever that moves through a potential difference, a voltage difference of, of some number of volts. So when you multiply a charge in coulombs times a volt, you actually get a joule. So in the case of the electron volt, uh, basically what we found is uh, the electron volt, one electron volt is defined to be the charge that a single electron, or excuse me, the potential energy that a single electron gets by going through a voltage difference of one volt. So we happen to know that the charge of the electron is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And of course, we're wanting to go that to go through a, a voltage difference of exactly one volt. So that's any number of snippet figures. So from that, we see that one electron volt is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So that's what an electron volt is. It's 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And of course, a giga electron volt, as in 4.00 GeV, is actually equal to 4.00 times 10 to the 9th electron volts and that's just the uh, standard abbreviations uh, pre prefix if you will in the systems international or the metric system so we have that so what we're asked to calculate in this particular case is in problem four we're asked a to calculate the speed and we're asked b to calculate uh, the gamma factor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to realize that the kinetic energy according to relativity, is equal to gamma minus 1 times mc squared, OK? So that's actually what the kinetic energy is. I happen to know that the kinetic energy is 4.00 GeV, which equals 4.00 times 10 to the ninth EV, which happens to equal 
uh, one EV is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So ultimately I can see that the kinetic energy is 640.8 times 10 to the negative 12. So that's 640.8 times 10 to the negative 12. And we use three sig figs here. So I'm carrying one extra sig fig uh, times 10 to the negative 12 joules. That's what the kinetic energy is. Now, uh, that's the left hand side. We also have this right hand side, which is the, uh, the rest energy mc squared. So if we uh, get this number and this number, we can solve for gamma minus one, solve for gamma, and then we know that gamma is defined in terms of v, so we can find that. So that's really what we're shooting for here. So uh, mc squared, the rest energy of the proton, which by the way, will be asked later. So that's uh, basically the mass of the proton, which is 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms times the speed of light, which I'll write out with all its glory. It's 299,792,458 meters per second. Again, you don't have to write that. You just want to write 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And that will be just fine. When I do that calculation, I get 150.36 uh, times 10 to the negative 12 joules. Okay, so that's the energy. Notice uh, in this case, I had four sig figs and I used all the sig figs. So all these are actually sig figs. So that would be acceptable to that many decimal places. Now, if I want uh, to find gamma, all I have to do is sit gamma minus one equal to KE over MC squared. So gamma minus one is equal to KE over mc squared and of course ke is 640.8 times 10 to the negative 12 joules again i got that one extra sig fig there and then the mc squared is 150.36 times 10 to the negative 12 joules when i divide those two I end up getting 4.2617. This really should be three sig figs, so I'm carrying two extra there. But that means gamma is equal to 4.2617 plus one. So gamma is actually equal to 5.2617. Again, carried with a couple extra digits. So I now have an answer to part B. And part A, of course, is uh, they want us to calculate the velocity. So we know that gamma is defined to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus V over C squared, which is also 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared. If you look in special relativity 0, 0, 2, you'll find that we actually solved this expression for beta. Uh, in terms of gamma. And when we did that, we found that beta is equal to the square root of gamma squared minus one divided by gamma. So when we do that, we can see that beta is actually equal to the square root of 5.2617 squared minus one, all that under the square root divided by 5.2617. If you work out the details of this, you'll see that this should come out in three sig figs as well. When I do that calculation, I get 0 0.98177, again, carrying two extra sig figs, okay? Now from this, we can now get that the velocity, since beta is defined to be V over C, then we know that the velocity is equal to beta times C. So I'm going to take 0 0.98177, and uh, well, 98177, and I'm going to multiply that by the speed of light, which 
Uh, let's go ahead and do it 3.00 uh, times 10 to the 8th meters per second, even though I'm actually going to use the whole uh, nasty number. And in this case, I'm going to get, uh, turns out to be 294.33 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So that's the actual velocity. In other words, V is equal to 0 0.98177C, but it's also equal to 294.33 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So that turns out to be answer A. Now, if we look back at our original problem, I'll just share screen again. We'll see that we've already solved A and B. And next, they want to know what is the momentum of this proton? And then D, what is the rest energy? Well, we've already done the rest energy. In fact, the rest energy is uh, 150.36 times 10 to the negative 12th. So I will circle that as uh, part D when we get back to the problem. But the rest of it is just turn, uh, after we determine the momentum is to just uh, compare the kinetic energy uh, using relativistic kinetic energy to the classical and then do the same thing for uh, momentum, uh, comparing it to the classical. So we're gonna go ahead and stop the share and we'll work on the next part of the problem. So what I see now is, as I told you, we already found part D, and that was the rest energy of the proton. The rest energy of the proton turned out to be 150.36. Uh, in reality, that's four sig figs, so really the six is not a proper sig fig, but this is your answer to part D. So now we've gotten part A, B, C, and, or excuse me, A, B, and D done. Now we want to know part C, and part C, of course, is wanting to know the momentum. So the momentum is actually pretty easy given what we already know. Uh, the momentum is given by P equals gamma MV. We already got V, we already got M, and we already got gamma. So really all I have to do is take 5.2617 Again, that's two extra sig figs times 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms times 294.33 times 10 to the six meters per second. Multiply all that and we'll get the, uh, the actual relativistic momentum in units of kilograms meters per second. Uh, when I do that, my answer comes out to be 2.5909, again, keeping, keeping a couple extra digits, times 10 to the negative 18th kilograms meters per second. So that is equal to the momentum. So this is part C. Now, if we wish to know the kinetic energy in class, in terms of classical physics, then I'm just going to do E. Kinetic energy classical is one half m v squared. So again, I'm just going to take one half m and v squared. I've got my uh, v is 294.33 times 10 to the six. My n is m is 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27, and my uh, of course, one half is just one half. When I multiply all that stuff out, I end up getting 72.466 times 10 to the negative 21st joules. Uh, when I actually compare that per percent error, really what we're doing is we're going to take uh, the actual kinetic energy 
which was uh, 640.8 times 10 to the negative 12th joules. So I'll do 640.8 times 10 to the negative 12th minus 72.466 times 10 to the negative. Oops, I was comparing kinetic energy rate. Yeah, that's right. Uh, kinetic energy was 644.8 times 10 to the negative 12 joules. And oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm comparing it to the kinetic energy. Yes, that's right. 10 to the negative 12th joules here. And then I'm going to divide that, of course, by the accepted value, which is a 640.8 times 10 to the negative 12th joules again. And then I move the decimal two places to the right to add a percent symbol. When I do that calculation, I get 88.69%. So this is the answer to part E. Now, as far as momentum goes, that's actually even easier. So for part D, momentum classical is just M times V. So literally, I'm just going to take the momentum and divide it by the 5.2617. When I do that, I end up getting a momentum of 492. Uh, four one times ten to the negative twenty first, and that, of course, is still in kilograms meters per second. So uh, that's actually the classical momentum, whereas the actual momentum was two hundred and uh, excuse me, the actual momentum was. 2.59 times to the negative 18th. So again, I'm going to take the bigger minus the smaller. So I'm going to take this 2.5909 times to the negative 18th, subtract from it 4.492.41 uh, times to the negative 21st. And then I'm going to divide it by that value, just like I did here. It's a big number minus small number divided by the accepted value. And when I do that, I'll find that the percent error for momentum is actually equal to 80.99%. Uh, again, that's probably one extra sig fig there, one extra sig fig there. And this is the answer to part D. Uh, I don't think it was too much of a jump to skip those steps since percent error is a uh, pretty remedial calculation. But as you can see, uh, that is uh, the difference uh, on the order of almost 90% error for using classical relativity instead of uh, classical, excuse me, physics instead of relativity. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, notice also that the total energy, the kinetic energy was 4 GeV, which actually turned out to be 640.8 times to the negative 12 joules. Well, when you compare that to the actual uh, rest energy, that's 140.36 that's times to the negative 12, 12 joules. Whenever you start getting kinetic energies on the order of uh, rest energies, then you, you know it's about time to start using relativity. So I hope that helps you better understand relativity. Have a good day.